We're talking about elk meat today and the beneficial properties that are inside of it. Bison's actually, bison's pretty good. I think bison meat is really good with like spaghetti. I think it is overrated. Oh my God. Oh, no sound on you, Mayor. Apparently there's no sound on you. How about now? Okay. Checked it. We're good. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, you're good. We were talking about body. bison burgers and elk and uh, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously tech-related information that the show uh, asks of us to talk yeah, about. We should do a whole nutrition episode and we could talk about how you're uh, eating sour strips and drinking an energy drink at the same time for your dinner. Maybe <laughs> Jade, so, I better not no. lead that discussion. So what happened actually is why I'm just slightly snacking. I had like two Doritos Cool Ranch chips earlier too, um, oh, good. because uh, the people who delivered my groceries didn't bother to actually like knock on my door. So I don't know how long they've been out there. So my pizza, like my DiGiorno's pizza, that was delivery, <laughs> was like <laughs> a nutritional disaster. Look, I've been eating like this my whole life. I haven't gone downhill just yet. <laughs> Did you, have you checked your blood pressure lately? Yeah, it's always been good. That's good. Won't last forever though. How old are you? 29, 28, 28. Oh, that's not bad. Mm -mm, not bad yet. Uh, what that's what I... they all say. They yeah. all say it'll catch up to me. Yeah. I mean, I. See what happens. I'm in pretty darn good health, I think. Um, You're looking good. Looking big, bro. I'm 35. And there are. It's weird little things, though. Like, it's like your back just starts to, like, you know, like, get, like, permanently tight. And if you don't do something about it, like, you know, like stretch or like something like on like a daily basis, like your back kind of starts to hurt and it's not enough to be like a huge problem. You know what I mean? But it does. It kind of gets annoying. Like, you, you know, it drags you down when you wake up in the morning and stuff like that. Well, tall people typically do have back problems. That That is an actual medical condition. Yeah. I'm small. Uh, I've got literally no signs of like any kind of like bodily disfa like failures that run into my family run into my mm -hmm. family uh literally the only thing that i am technically kind of concerned about but it's also because it's very long is that i get a lot of hair loss so like mm -hmm. i will be washing my hair and just, so much hair is covered in my hands but i won't you know, make any gi jane two jokes in oh this is 2022 sir we're far past those <laughs> those kinds of jokes okay <laughs> that joke was in 2022 grow up yeah. <laughs> okay that was Chris Rock's joke that started the Will Smith incident. Yeah, the, the G.I. Jane one, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about cutting my hair, actually, but I like it. Like, I like having, being able to do something different with it. It is fun time. sometimes to kind of change up your hairstyle, though. Yeah. It is. It, it gives you a whole new... It, isn't it weird? It's like there's like a song it's about like something like when you buy a new pair of shoes and all of a sudden like your outlook on life has changed. Like that, that kind of stuff does work like short term for like two weeks. Like you're just like, I don't know, like I really like this like new pair of jeans I got, you know, like or I changed my hair up, you know, like, you know, it works short I think, term. I think gender theories like or not theories, but more of like gender. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, norms? Subconscious. No, no, not not norms. Uh, stereotypes. Uh, like I've been, I've been realizing them a lot more as I like kind of think about them. Like there was like a TikTok where this girl's like, reason number like five thousand why I love men. Um, they wear the same pair of underwear that they've owned since like eighth yeah. grade, yeah. and I was like, okay, she gets it. And she's like, and if they need to buy more underwear, they will buy the exact same brand. Yeah, probably. And I'm like, yeah, I, I would do that actually. I actually have been buying I the had... same pair of brand underwear from H and M for like the past ten years. When my wife moved in with me, she went through like my closet. And uh, she was like asking me, like, you know, how long have you had this shirt? Because like you're trying to like free up space and, you know, stuff like that. Like, because I had had some stuff. I was not by any means a hoarder. Like we had a whole extra bedroom. But um, like I, you know, hold tend to hold on to stuff and just like not get rid of it. And like mm -hmm. some of my shirts, like I literally had had like since like junior year of high school. I'm like still had them at, at age 29 yeah. or 30 or whatever. Like I had like a yellow Samurai Champloo shirt that like literally wore in high school <laughs> it's just like why don't i get rid of it it's samurai shampoo you know like welcome welcome james by the way um no i know exactly what you mean uh i've gotten into the habit of just throwing crap away that i will genuinely know i do better not at need. it as i get older yeah. yeah 
well, I mean, like, you've probably moved a million times, no? Like, if I have to move again, I don't want to hold on to yeah. it. It's just extra shit that yeah. I don't want to take with me. I have a so, tote, a giant tote, like, probably like this big, like this deep, full of, like, games and game systems that I have owned for, like, the past 20 years, pretty much, like, GameCube on. And, like, I know I'm not ever taking it to, like, a pawn shop. That thing's going in a dumpster somewhere eventually. Because <laughs> if I take it to a pawn shop, I'm going to be down there for, like, three hours. And they're going to give me, like, 80 bucks, you know? And it's going to be, like... Yeah. I might you don't well want to waste just... your, your own time sorting through it, thinking this is what a pawn shop would probably yeah, buy. I did sell a couple of, like, the rare games on, like, eBay. And, like, that was worth it. Because I got, like... Like, my copy of Ikaruga for GameCube went for, like, 100 bucks. And I was like, that was worth oh. it, you know? Like... Not bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. Well, um... I think we've kind of wasted enough time talking about our personal stuff. It's and not a podcast hygiene. unless you do that in the first five, ten minutes. So we've gotten much better at it. You know, we we started to kick it off like it's the the JRE. You know, just yeah. kind of looping ourselves straight into it. So now we're one, gonna go through we'll all get... ten episodes of the Halo show and tell you guys what we think of each one, one by one. No, and uh, also tell you why PlayStation's awful and why Witch <laughs> you need to get off of it already. But no, no, something I do want to say before we get into the news, and we got some good stuff here. Uh, some of the Nemesis content has been killing it lately. Last night, uh, Jester's Core, the D&D on Twitch, when I checked it, it had like 150 viewers, which was uh, awesome to see. Dog. That's awesome, actually. Yeah, and I saw uh, Hobbs. It's Hobbs. Uh, was interviewed yeah, on Nemesis Insider. I think it was Thursday, if I remember correctly. So make sure you're following this channel, guys, because there's lots of good stuff happening in this podcast included. But so check out some of the other stuff, too. Let's go. All right. So, you know... That I got that I hate Star Wars. That's why this week I got a dunk on it right off the bat because the Knights of the Old Republic remake has been delayed indefinitely, which Definitely. usually means canceled, but not canceled. You know, uh, you sent that to me. No, no, you didn't send it to me. Maz, Maz sent did, it. Yeah. Maz sent it, and I was just like, get fucked, Maz. <laughs> well, this has like several layers of major implications i think because sony had purchased this as at least a console exclusive um and this was a relatively new developer i believe like maybe their first game and mm -hmm. it seems to be that there's some sort of scandal involved because multiple like directors and higher up people from this studio were straight up not just like left they were fired like like yeah. run out and then and then the whole project got put on delay so or maybe not even delay on because they said they're moving to other projects. Like they flat out said, like we are moving to other projects. So what do you think of all this? What do you think prompted this? Cause this is a remake of a all time classic that had a lot of people excited. Uh, I'll start with the drama piece of it. Cause I think drama is the most important piece of this <laughs> pie right here. And because it's the juiciest, but like they're, they're ha they're to, to fire like two people specifically on this project that were so like detrimental to the entire development of the game like what did they do yeah. i gotta know how like, toxic I'm... this have to be or yeah or maybe not toxic but what were they hiding problematic yeah like what what was it that did they steal money you know like what what was this it, I mean, to fire those two and completely put it on pause, I don't think it was anything at least, you know, I want to say Activision Blizzard bad. Not like I mean, breaking was, the law. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that somebody was breaking the law to at least get rid of two of them that did this. Could be. I mean, I don't think that stealing breast milk out of the Star Wars refrigerator is going to constitute an entire, you know, delay of your <laughs> <Was> game. <laughs> specifically but, star wars branded refrigerator it's an r2d2 refrigerator that just pops out i've got some titty milk in there um oh, but man, yeah man. i am i'm pretty bring, sure bring that like in, in. <laughs> i'm both. trying to quit quit interrupting me uh in this case like i'm pretty sure they were like embezzling money or something like that yeah like, it had to be something really bad of ceiling maybe not utilizing the resources of the funding properly or stuff like that uh, I don't think it was going to be anything like super spicy so that's just my take on it on on the this drama side serious. of it but it's concerning to like know that the project is gone now and mm -hmm. you know game's good the studio that had that little teaser up i mean like cgi is always cgi but yeah. it's always exciting it looked great i mean i don't care much for star wars i don't have attachments to the previous game but it looked good still well and usually and i'm not a developer i always say this when i'm going to make a statement like this you know it's easy for all of us to say always but usually uh, you would think remaking a game 
is a little bit easier than developing one from scratch because the whole blueprint is already there, right? Like you're not starting a new, like, so it seems like the time frame you would have the development to develop it is going to be shorter. Whereas right now, like a, you know, quadruple a game is going to take like five to seven years from scratch. Whereas you'd think like a remake, I would say three years probably because, you know, of course you're going to have to do new things and stuff, but if you've already got an engine, and so on. I'd say three years from there. And again, some developer might listen to that and be like, you're crazy, dude. Like, that's not the way it works. But. Always different per, per, like, per studio, yeah. per the tech of the year as well. Like, especially yeah. funding. Funding is always the most important piece there rather than mm -hmm. the developers themselves. So, but they no, had, I totally understand you. That's the next thing I want to talk about. I got to land based Sony and Jim Ryan on this because this is the second time that Sony has really botched something and and almost fallen into what seems to be like a scam with like a with a small studio so like this developer it's like aspire or something like that i don't know how to pronounce that aspire, aspire but with a y in it sorry can't aspire i just I, I don't know what that is but it's not that deep <laughs> yeah um but like you know it's a brand new studio and like here's this brand new studio and it's not doesn't mean that brand new studios can't do great things because they do but here's this unproven studio you know, remaking one of the greatest games of all time. Like, how did they get trusted to do that? You know, like that was like a red flag to me. And then Sony like jumped out on it, grabbed it as an exclusive and like announced it like seemingly pretty early. And now we've yeah. seen this happen. And now this has also happened very recently with that game Abandoned, which was a horror game. Mm -hmm. And people were theorizing because Sony announced it and made a big deal out of it. And then we didn't hear about it for like two years. And people were speculating that because of that, like there had to be some grander plan. Like this was actually Kojima's Silent Hill, but brought back under a different name. And this was Kojima trickery and it was all going to be revealed that it's actually Silent Hill. And then it turned out that the game hadn't even been developed in like three, four years or whatever, any further than like a demo that they showed to investors. And they basically scammed their investors and the whole game is that game's on ice too. And Sony put these games like, out there in front of fans and got people excited and, and invested in it and then these it's like i don't know it's it's I, you don't really see that like it's a strange like it's, well, it's just a question does sony doesn't own the studio for aspire though they're just published no. they're helping them publish no. the game correct okay i mean like i'll give them the benefit of the doubt here and same thing that happened with like uh the Silent hills game is just like you know you got konami and who's a completely separate entity of sony well that's a you trustable know, company like, that's a tr <laughs> at the time established at the you know, time i guess yeah you've got I a mean, relationship with them already insight. you know they're not going to scam insight, you though. that got canceled True. but they didn't get scammed or, yeah, or like scammed. they didn't debate the public that's fair I'll, I'll i'll give it that but i mean on the semantic side of things i would say I don't know. I, I don't think that this is so much on the Sony side of things. I haven't really seen enough of it. I haven't dived into the rabbit hole Sony. of things yet. I'm just like, okay. somebody somewhere is not like, not doing their due diligence. And I mean, or, or maybe it's not that. Maybe it's that they're placing their trusts in the wrong people in, in hopes of getting these like hype moments. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like this, they announced this game like way too early or whatever in hopes of drumming up like fan support and hype. And then like this happens. I mean, Microsoft's had the same issue, to be fair, but it's not yeah. it, like that, like, you know, scale bound is one of them. But again, reputable studio game just didn't work out. These other ones are like studios that are seemingly not even on the map. And then they're not going anywhere. It's just a little odd to me. Yeah, I, I think it. I think it's really unfortunate, like considering the timing of things, because and I always like to bring it up as like a contrast and comparison for like whenever Xbox fails, clearly people like love to see that. They love to dunk on them on, yeah. on social media. Like, I get it. Like, I don't need to argue that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that like it doesn't it's not going to happen to Sony. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were just genuinely disappointed at this point, which, you know, is fair. Like, yeah, about COVID oh, yeah, being sure. canceled. Like that, or not canceled, but it's delayed and like yeah, not yeah. having any promise of what's going to happen. It's not coming anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was already a far way out from when it was announced. So That's what definitely I'm saying. like anytime sooner is not like, happening either. At best, it was um, probably going to be coming two to three years from now. So yeah. now we're, t but, I don't think it'll ever, if anything, I think it'll be moved to maybe a different studio butts in or a different publisher even and picks up, you know, 
the you partnership. Think Sony has it. like the entire publishing rights to just like straight up buy out the IP, not like the name or the Probably whatever not. it is that's developed. No, but I would also say that 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 specifically Knights of the Old Republic is cursed now because um, not only has this happened, but uh, Dan and Dave from Game of Thrones, the showrunners of Game of Thrones, were supposed to develop an entire uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, trilogy of movies and that's why they rushed the end of game of thrones like the last few seasons because mm -hmm. they signed on to do this knights of the old republic thing with star wars and then that fell through <laughs> so, so that died there's so much star wars shit happening at this point now it's just like i don't trust disney to allow anybody yeah. to create a, a good game honestly yeah. like sure fallen order was like i want to say decent at most mm -hmm. but like i think that's just as far as it went i'm like I'm, you could give it to EA, you could give it to Microsoft, you could give it to Nintendo. I don't think there will really be a good Star Wars game mm -hmm. to come out again. And the only reason why people were like, you know, and I'm just speaking out of ignorance here, I, I'm gonna sound like that, but it's just like people are excited for it because they know what the game is capable of because it's already been made. Yeah, yeah. But it's a you know, we've seen like we're seeing this happen right now in the development stages of things right here. Who knows like what the rest of the game is going to do going forward. Right. If it was that bad that they had to cancel indefinitely, how bad is the game in its current state of development? That, at least not how bad is the game though? That's that's see, that's what I'm wondering is because like you said, like not only did they fire these two directors, but they like the company was immediately like, yes, we're moving on to other projects and this is delayed indefinitely. Like, People, people join studios, people leave studios, you know, directors change mid development. This happens. What happened that was so bad that they're like, we are just getting away from this, even though we know fans are going to eat this up. Like, like, did they, were they like taking all the money and just like, did they not put like had development barely even started? And maybe they just were like, we basically have nothing. So we might as well throw it away because there's, it's not like we were like, you know, 30% done with the game or like we didn't have even anything to build on like they're just like mm -hmm. just throw it out the bathwater you know like I, do you salts. get what I'm saying though like yeah no no I totally I totally get like, you. They, I mean, like, I don't, even I don't if they had like a a shell of a game they could fire the directors and be like okay we're gonna bring in new leadership and we're gonna continue on with this because we know it's gonna sell yeah. like, it's guaranteed to sell and there's yeah, like, uh, nope, we're out. Peace. Like, it's just kind of weird. It, it is extremely weird. And we've seen this with like so many games in the past. I think Scalebound is like the most common and recent one. And we know why, though, at least. That yeah. took a little bit of time, but it actually wasn't that far apart from what it was canceled to when we kind of got a little bit of insight yeah. and the answers to it. Um, well, but I mean, like, even games like the new Perfect Dark game is mm -hmm. like kind of going through that as well. And same yeah. thing with Everwild for Rare. Yeah. Well, and Platinum was scalebound, basically came out eventually and just said, like, like we couldn't get this game to be in a place where we wanted it to. Like, it wasn't mm -hmm. good enough, like, flat out. And Blizzard has done that a lot in the past, too. Like, they've announced games and canceled them, like, back in the day. You know, a really, there was a, a really high Blizzard standard. You know, if they couldn't meet it, they would just cancel the game flat out. Just, hey, this didn't live up to our expectations, and we canceled it. But a remake of KOTOR being... Delayed indefinitely was not on my bingo card for 2022. Really, really, really big, really big news, honestly. Like, I definitely yeah. wasn't expecting it either. Wasn't even honestly, announced kinda, that long ago. I, I, dude, it was literally like less than a year ago. Yeah. I think, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't be that far behind. Oh my God. That's unfortunate. I really do feel bad for fans because I know that, like, again, like people absolutely like, like rave for that game. Like, it is part of their childhood, it is ingrained into mm. them. I think it so, just came to mobile recently, it. though. So. I know that's what you guys wanted to go download the mobile you version of KOTOR. KOTOR on mobile. <laughs> yeah, do it up. Microsoft just re randomly comes out like, we're now giving away KOTOR for free. Yeah, probably. KOTOR has been added to Game Pass. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, that would be so... <laughs> oh, be so that, funny. Would, that would be pretty good. And it's now in 4K. You know, I think of, I've been thinking about uh, the value of like these big AAA titles and like where we're going to see them going forward. Because mm -hmm. I saw... Uh, a recent article that came out um, that says that the like it was from the Brazilian PlayStation uh, representative said this uh, in an interview. It was translated roughly. He said um, Sir, that excuse means, my French. That means slap, slap a hottie in Portuguese. Uh, That's the only okay. Portuguese phrase that I know. Sorry. Okay. Well, uh, apparently the, this person had said that they're actually really concerned about xbox owning the call of duty ip and yes. making it console exclusive 
And it's just like, thank you. Finally, somebody said it out loud. That's in an important enough position for it to be reputable. Mm-hmm. Because like it might be in Brazil, but you know, a representative of the company is Sony, still very big. Yeah, Sony actually said that. Yeah, Sony representative actually wrote that and, to a court. Yeah. And like understandably, like I think that is the right, you know, concern. I mean, like I would be concerned too if I was in that position. I'd be like, well, damn. But what was also interesting was like the vocabulary or at least like what they said about the game and mm-hmm. how much they recognize the, the, the game itself being impact to the platform. They're like, yeah, legit. This is the biggest game like ever yeah, for the biggest the IPs, not only in gaming, but in in entertainment. I mean, yeah, it, put it's, it up there. It's any movie everything franchise, from gaming to TV, Harry anime. Potter. I mean, what do you, yeah. you know? It's up when you say Call of Duty. Anybody knows of any age. Everybody. Yeah. And, you know, Microsoft's already said that they don't have any plans to or they're they don't have plans to make it console exclusive, yeah. but they're you know how they are. They like to play off of like the vocabulary gonna put it on and game semantics. Pass and stuff. They're going to put it on Game Pass and stuff, but they might. They only said that, yeah, we don't plan on like making it exclusive. Plus, yeah. we will continue out our current the, con- the current contractual obligations between Blizzard and as well as Sony mm-hmm. to make sure that, you know, those next Call of Duty games land there is like the go to console, whatever. But, you know, they can still technically put it on there. I don't think they will. I think that Microsoft knows that they will quite literally like lose a lot of money if they just make yeah. it Xbox exclusive. Yeah, but, uh, but like you said, they can. I mean, you. I agree that the guy from Sony who said this and wrote this in response to the the Activision Blizzard at uh, acquisition by Xbox. Yes, that I get why he said it, but I also think I've seen a lot of people taking up this cause. And so this is Sony's fear. It's also one of the most brain dead responses I think that you could give because it's like, yes, it's true, but you don't buy, you don't spend eighty billion dollars. They're like, well, you know, if 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 Microsoft gets this company, that might influence consumers what what console they buy. It's like, well, yeah, no, they're not spending eighty billion dollars to help you sell Playstations. Like that, they're yeah. buying it to help sell Xboxes. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Like, and, and you don't have to like it, and that. But it's like, yeah, believe it or not, they're spending that eighty billion dollars to try to get ahead of you, their competition. Like it's yeah. what they're doing. Like, like they, I think a lot of people. I mean, Microsoft kind of swung in and like acquired, or chose to try to acquire them at a really unique time of like their entire uh, shakedown happening internally. Uh, booby milk. <laughs> but like in this case, the like, phrase. At the, at the end of the like at the end of the day like they're they're obviously doing it just to like make more money but oh sure uh, what what I wanted to say was just like thinking about the influence and the impact of like buying a game for your system mm-hmm. it's just like you know there's so much controversy and always like this hot topic of you know oh well I buy this console because of the exclusive which is totally fine like mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's what you want that's what you want enjoy the fruits of everyone else's labor as a third party title like Call of Duty mm-hmm. but you know no one's I would say majority of the market isn't buying a PlayStation or an Xbox for the exclusives or buying it because of the relativity to like whatever it is that's closest to their family members, their friends, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, um, the whole reason I got in the Xbox ecosystem in high school, I mean, sure, I, I loved Halo and stuff like that when it launched. I played it at a friend's house and I was like, I got to play this. But that was my hook in was, oh, my friends got Halo, and then I got it, and then another one of my friends wanted to get an Xbox so he could play mm-hmm. Halo. It, like, that's the social. Well, I think it, it made sense at that time, yeah. you know, for us, you know, growing up with it, like, we didn't really have the the entire ecosystem that we have yeah. today, and, like, where we could see it evolve, and I'm going to say a forbidden word here, the upcoming metaverse <laughs> of, like, the social, um, like, ecosystem that these mm. consoles and gaming is just going to have in general it's no longer going to matter what system you play on at this point and yeah eventually. That, that that made me think like well what the hell is going to happen to these exclusives going forward mm. i mean like at this point they're no longer exclusive anymore but like it's interesting that you say that because i didn't mean to cut you off if you want to say something go no, ahead no you're good you're good go um i was going to save this for later because we have a whole bunch of like uh, console wars stuff to go over like sales figures and profitability some really interesting gaming industry numbers but something that uh, i saw an article today that uh sony had a massive drop uh this quarter compared to the quarter last year it was like i think it was like 35 percent less engagement from playstation 5 owners so, so the issue wasn't 
uh, a sales thing that comes later. But the, this specific mm -hmm. concern was that the people that are buying PlayStations aren't playing them nearly as much as Sony had expected or even much as they were a year ago. And this is they said, like, this is internally a concern to them that they need to figure out. And to me, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's that their business model, which is what they've become known for, these super high quality, I always say, it, you know, triple A single player games, these cinematic single player games. It is what Sony's it's like their that's their, it's brand. Like their identity, right? You know, like The yeah. Last of Us and Spider-Man. They can only carry you so far in this market because most people are going to play them once. And then they're going to stop and you can't generate additional revenue. You can't keep players playing that game beyond that first you know, two weeks or, or a month mm -hmm. or whatever. And all it takes with that business model is, is one dud and you just really screwed up because the game's not going to evolve. Like, but you know, you put out a battle Royale game or you put out a MOBA or whatever. And let's say people like it for two weeks and they put it down because of whatever, well, you can still fix it. You can, you can yeah. bring up it, revitalize it. With a single player story driven game, that's likely not gonna happen. It's it's that's it. You sure it, it you can update it, you can fix goes. bugs and stuff, but like New Game Plus is a good value, but I mean the way how accessible games are now, it's just why would I continue a new game plus on something unless I'm that dedicated, but right. in, an oversaturated gaming is so oversaturated, like it doesn't matter oh, what sure. system you play on. Like in an oversaturated market, it's just like, you know, why would I continue a new game plus of X single player game whenever I could go to play like Minecraft or I could go to I play always Among Us or Fall Guys. When people say like, oh, I don't have anything to play. It's like there is literally more to play at this point in time than there ever has been in the history of video gaming. Like it's not that you don't have anything to play. You're overwhelmed by what you need to choose. It's to play. that or you're just burnt out on what you have been playing. Yeah. And you need to change it up or or I have to tell people all the time, like I hear so many people like, oh, I'm just you know, I'm not having fun. And I'm like, then go do something else for a what day or two. Is? Like, literally, yeah. like, oh, it's, it's not, stress. it's not a bad idea. Like, it's fine. Like, you're not committing a sin. Like, go watch a movie. Like, I don't know, you know, Quite discovering yourself that usually, you're just like, wow, I'm getting old. I can't game right now. Usually when you come back, if it's like even a few days off or a, even a week off or whatever, even if it seems counterintuitive, when you come back, you're going to feel like so much more like excited to be like back and playing it again. And like, it just you, people get so offended setting, when I say that. Like, oh my god. You're putting gamers on a high pedestal to ever come to the the terms of acceptance. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we can't we can't accept that like one, we just don't want to play a video game right now. Like you it's that's okay part to say of like that. everyone it is definitely okay to say that. But it's just I don't know. That culture is so weird. Like there's just like forbidden things you're not allowed to do to yourself so mm -hmm. long as you don't lose like grasp of that identity. I am like fully prepared by the time that I'm 80 to like have completely different political views. I'm very, I'm very aware that, you know, tomorrow I can literally just want to say I'm done with gaming for a month. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go touch grass. I want to focus on my body. Like those kinds of things have happened in our lives and sure. just, just admit it. But uh, back to my original point, it's just like, what the hell is going to happen to these like mega IP games now? Because I'm not saying that they're going to disappear, but the demand for them and the quality of them are going to like fall fall down. And I think we've already seen that with games like Gears and Halo uh, and as well as like some other stuff. I mean, like I'm not saying the gaming industry is falling so far apart from story yeah. driven like experiences that it's suffocating these previous experiences. It's like the costs Those are also, attached. Are also developer problems. All right. I, I'm not going to pretend like it, it. it's not a developer problem. It is. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, we've got so many different types of like online experiences coming up with the metaverse. Single player IPs are just quite literally going to be like a very niche. They're going to be the the people who are like Laserdisc. On a AAA just, level, I think so eventually. And a lot yeah. of people don't like that. But it, I mean, when you think about the risks associated with, OK, I'm an indie developer. I can make a single player game in about two years basically just paying my own salary. That's the only costs. So let's say less than half a million dollars. I can make this, this indie game. I can make the next hotline Miami. I can make the next Fez. I can make the next mm -hmm. go gone home for less than half a million dollars. And you know, it's going to sell 10 million copies. Cause it's only going to be pr priced for nine 99 or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, would you rather do that? Or would you rather pay a team of literally at this point, maybe, maybe a thousand people, to develop the next, you know, whatever, oh, make an IP, an Uncharted or or whatever, 
And uh, if it doesn't hit, we just lost $500 million. Like, like literally between the marketing and the budget for the game and the healthcare for all those employees. And like, and I'm not saying like, Hey, I'm not saying I want AAA gaming to die or quadruple A gaming to die, or I want developers to lose their jobs because I absolutely do not. Um, but it's just like the re staring that reality in the face. Like, okay, if we make this game and it bombs, we are like, our whole company is at risk. Like that's basically what it is at this point. There's no safety net. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, a great way to say it. What, what can you do about it? And especially, you know, like in a place where influencers are so important to like your product now, like I was literally watching Charlie Moist Critical play God of War the other night. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, people still playing God of War in 2022. That game came out like five years ago. Yeah. Amazing. And now God of, War, God of War Ragnarok is going to come out. Right. And the same thing's probably going to happen like five years out, five years later after this year. Right. He's going to be playing God of War Ragnarok on his PC. And yep. we go, wow, people are still playing that game. Yeah. What, where's that game at now? But those... Like, those those are needles in the haystack though that that's what i mean like no matter how talented your studio is you can't always just be churning out the next god of war or the last of us because you know even even sony who's like i said they're, they're basically that that standard for super high quality single player games i mean they've had misses look at days gone uh look at the most recent horizon game um the last of us too uh you know was very divisive and didn't i don't think i don't think that went down the way they wanted it to as far as its reception by any means um yeah. so uh, the best of the best later. i mean no. you can't Sorry, talk about dog no it's okay you can't always be that like yeah everything you can't be midas like everything that you touch literally isn't just gonna land no. all the time no matter how much you love the project I have a theory because like Sony is a good example of this, of having a lot of IP and then just straight up ending it mm -hmm. and not continuing with it mm -hmm. because they're smart. Actually, like I've done this I mean, since I'm PlayStation not. one. They've been doing, yeah, they did it to crash. They did it to uncharted recently. You Spyro. know, they, they shelve some of their, yeah, Spyro, they shelve some of their products actually Jack and um, because they're like, yeah, they show it because they're like, we can't continue supporting a game. We know that's just not going to reach our market or our audiences mm -hmm. that we want. This isn't going to make us money. They've been Resistance, smart about that. Twisted metal, uh, so calm, all my favorites. I mean, they might. I mean, obviously, we know those two are coming back through some leaks that we've seen. But twisted metals official, yeah. I think so calm, not official, but there's been some so calm. Like, yeah, there's leaks. In yeah, in the dark. Um, and then uh, like they're they're being smart about how they're bringing them back. They're not exactly just like trying to, you know, Assassin's Creed us with it every single yeah, year yeah. or anything like that. They're smart about it, but I'm hoping that um. You know, with my theory is that we're going to get to a point where developers and development is going to be so. I want to say accessible. I don't think that right now, and this is my theory, I don't actually have any evidence to support it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't don't crush me with like, oh, I'm everybody record what Jada right is now. about to say. It's nothing controversial, but I don't think that there's enough people in the development field that are actually going to be able to, you know, fulfill these needs. I know in China, though, there's a a lot of developers around there mm -hmm. um and i've seen like some stuff like on kotaku where it's just like a lot of talent for these developers are coming straight out of china mm -hmm. um i mean that's what you get whenever you're like the largest Korea, too. country in the world yeah so you know we're gonna see that happen that's not exactly a problem but it's just gonna continue to boom mm -hmm. um things within the metaverse for development coding uh and as well as uh engine building i think are gonna be significantly more accessible in the future so i think we'll start seeing these games but Honestly, I think they're going to go the Game Pass route. I think they're going to be just developed at a low budget, low, low, high expectation, meaning like mm -hmm. they're saying like we have high expectations for this, but we're not giving you the priority for that yeah. uh, to make a qualify like a great game. Because I don't think any publisher is currently doing that right now. Like if you think about it, unless you're Naughty Dog and I think Naughty Dog's strategy right now, I mean, I don't I mean like what they're doing still sounds pretty good rockstar honestly. has been successfully able to do that uh but i mean that's in question not, too all, all if they bought all it takes is one they're shutting down red dead online i mean like that's not what they planned like they're they're done developing it you know and gta 5 online by comparison is a cash cow i'm sure they wanted red dead online to be at least comparable maybe not the same yeah. but at least half of it but it's such a Rockstar is the only other one I can think of that can just like afford to be like, oh yeah, we'll make one game every seven years. And 
it would have made it made sense like back in the early days of like the original Xbox One or the Xbox, the PlayStation like two and stuff like that, because we had so much of like these IPs mm -hmm. in like massive droves. Like we would have like Spyro on like the Game Boy Color and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We would have um, so many different types of like, these big games like Star Wars, Sonic, like just kind of appear out of nowhere. You're like, yeah. oh, this is a trash game. It's a good game, whatever. Yeah. You kind of took what you got. And now it's just like well, we don't see them, but I think we're going to eventually get back to that return in place where it's Sonic's, just like these IPs are Sonic's got to be the, the only wild. franchise that's somehow growing while continually releasing trash iterations of their actual core product, which is the video game, because they, they haven't been like a truly great Sonic game in like. No, I know there's a couple like smaller scale ones that are pretty good. Like, uh, what was there's that? There's no way Sonic fans enjoy being Sonic fans. Was it Sonic Mania or something that's really good? Made it was made by an indie team, like a different developer. It was um, made by an indie team uh, from somebody who has actually uh, done them a lot of work a million for the dollars, community in Sonic. You know, like yeah. instead of what Team Sonic is probably asking for, like twenty, right thirty million dollars. Yeah, 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 and that. But yeah, those examples are few and far between. And even if you rewind the clock. On the PlayStation 2, Rockstar put out three Grand Theft Auto games. It was like every two years. You got GTA 3, you got Vice City, you got San Andreas. And now, we've literally been playing GTA 5 for three generations. You <laughs> know, like, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Such no, a different I, world. I absolutely agree. Speaking of those generations, I can't wait so we could stop focusing or at least developing for those consoles so that way these games could the old ones. do a little bit better. Yeah, like Halo Infinite is probably the best example. Like if you keep developing a game for that console, you're holding the rest of the systems back. Destiny 2 be only exists because Destiny 1 was held back by the, the old consoles. Original consoles yeah. yeah, like Halo Infinite right now is probably like the best case example of like you need to stop developing for this already. And like... I, as I was watching Moist Critical play God of War, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, this game looks really good. But yeah, it does. Damn, it looks the same as it does on the PlayStation Ragnarok, like PlayStation 5 for Ragnarok. I was yeah. like, dang, like I'm I'm stoked. That, I actually have time off for that game when it launches, but I'm like, this looks like the exact same game. Yeah. My my friend said that too about God of War and God of War Ragnarok, but I was like, in fairness to that game, it's like God of War is literally probably one of the five best looking games of all time. So like, I'm not really disappointed that the, the yeah. sequel doesn't look like a how leap much, forward, you know, how much higher can you possibly yeah. take it? And it's only RTX and I'm not going to drop down to 30 frames for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like I, it probably has, you know, some, yeah, probably, yeah the sequel probably has ray tracing or whatever the heck. Yeah. I, yeah. I've ne I have an RTX graphics card and I've never once turned ray tracing on for any single <laughs> game. It's, uh i turned on ray tracing for uh cyberpunk on my series mm -hmm. on my series x and i mean like you could tell like a lot of differences but like not enough for me to like give myself a migraine like 30 yeah. frames per second i thought about like uh doing quake 2 with uh <laughs> ray tracing on because they updated it to have ray tracing mm -hmm. you thought about it you haven't done it yet no that's what I, i'm not gonna go out of my way to so you're telling me you got this fancy ass card, you're not even using it to its fullest capacity? And I'm using it to get 144 frames per second in multiplayer games. Yeah, oh, that's fair. You know, you could do that also with my 1070. You want to swap? Uh, no, because I, I if, if I get a new graphics uh, card, I, I'll, I I might get rid of this one. I'm gonna try to get the 4000 series when it, whenever that comes. I only got it 2060, so it's not like I'm way up there. I mean, 2060 is still a really good card. Honestly, like, I'm surprised my 10 series is still doing pretty good. It's not a bad card at mm. all. Like, any of the 10 series stuff isn't bad at all. Like, yeah. my girlfriend has a 1060. A 1060... I forgot which 1060 she has, but it's still pretty good. Um, Speaking of Dr. Disrespect... Yeah, I was going to say, I just saw that in chat. I was like, let's make our transition right now. Time to segue. Speaking about development and things and yeah. potential hell. Really interesting. I, mean, I don't think it's it's hell. I don't uh, think it's hell either, but a lot of people were... The reaction, were... yeah. So Midnight Society, which is, you know, Dr. Disrespect studio, so to speak, uh, re officially revealed their game this week. It's now called Dead Drop. I love that name, by the way. Um, and it's important to note, because so many people have this wrong, it is a Tarkov-like game. It's, that's what it's going to be. It's not a Battle Royale. It's not Call of Duty. It's not a competitive shooter at all. It is going to be a Tarkov-like game, except it's supposed to have verticality. It's in a cyberpunk setting. They revealed their game, and they gave uh, 
gave us access to the first playable build. This has been in development for about six months. Less than eight months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a brand new studio. It looks like they've got about 40 employees right now. They're still ramping up. And they basically, in my opinion, they're changing the approach to game development. They're, they're not saying, hey, we're going to show you our first gameplay trailer after the game's been in, in development for you know two years or three years. We're going to involve you guys every step of the way. And here's the first playable build, which is basically a highly atmospheric firing range. Uh, and I've played it, and I'll talk about my thoughts on it. But the internet basically, uh, I shouldn't say everybody. I, I feel like most of the people who are like one of the variants who own the Founders Pass for this game like knew what they were getting into and, and were excited by the, to be involved with it. But a lot of other people everywhere, they tore it apart. And they're like, this game's trash. Like, there's not even enemies in it. Like, oh my God, it looks dated. And a lot of, a lot of the internet really showed how educated and arrogant it is in game yeah. development on that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, what, what was your reaction to all this? And what, what did you think of the, what you saw of the game? Okay, my first like overall like impression of it i was like okay it looks like a game like yeah. i don't think that there was anything that really wowed me here yeah. except the development time for this game yeah. i think a game being developed in less than eight months is actually incredible especially yeah. with a team that small mm -hmm. like you get you've not only distributed across an entire infrastructure your game to select people within your entire mm -hmm. unique community of nft members and th that deliverability was better than any other kind of like beta or alpha launch yeah. like we've ever seen. Like yeah. I thought that was extremely impressive. Like yeah. that is that is hard fucking work. Like 10, it really is. people. Yeah. Like that's not easy. It really isn't. And like I had a friend on like Twitter who's just like, ah, oh, this looks like ass. And I'm just like, dude, like give it a little bit of slack. I'm not saying it's this the best a mobile game. game. I kept hearing that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. And he's I was just like, you gotta be, you gotta know at least, bro. Like there's not a lot here that we're seeing that should be wild about except for the fact that it's already here in people's yeah. hands well, and he was just like well i'm not i'm not gonna put him down because he hyped it up a lot and i was like mm -hmm. you know i would like to hype up my game too if i'm one of like the yeah. most dominant streamers in the world ever and you also have you're also the first streamer to ever since own 1993 own game, 1994 like, i mean like dude <laughs> I, I I agree though. Like the game needs more time in the oven, but the point sure. of this was a demonstration. It wasn't the yeah. game. Well, and that's this process: is they're releasing these short playable experiences every six weeks, every six weeks to test specific, like singular things to collect the fans' feedback on. Do you like this gun? Do you like that gun? Try this gun. Okay, now try that one. Okay, now try to jump over this stuff and tell us how our jump feature feels. Tell us. Yeah. It's it's very. It, we're basically like we're doing what a game tester would do, uh, but we're being involved in the process. And I've said this before: it's like everybody on the internet rags on game studios for not taking you know feedback from the fans and not listening. Now here's a studio that's like literally every six weeks from from the very beginning, our game isn't even close to being even a game yet. It's like. And they've, they've said this isn't a, like a demo. It's not a beta. It's not early access. This is a playable build. Um, we're going to allow you guys to test it and tell us what you think of it. And they did. They gave us a survey to tell us what, what you think. And um, I think that's awesome. Thoughts? I mean, what were your thoughts? Let's hear it. So, so me, I, I was really impressed by the atmosphere of it. I think they worked really hard on nailing that for this first playable build. Like instantly when I stepped into it, I was like, this is a world that I want to play a game in like it's very like dark and rainy and cyberpunkish and I'm like playing a multiplayer game in that setting uh is very is very intriguing and it, it just it had that vibe to me that I was like okay I want to I want to play a game in, in this setting I think they established that very very well it's got style um everything else like you said it's it's a it's a playable thing I mean the, the shooting it works it it, it needs uh, it doesn't feel very smooth like it needs work um the animations need work uh the movement is a little too slow and sluggish for me uh right now but that style of game tends to have slow and sluggish movement as well um but that's what i said in my my uh my survey was that what i'm actually hoping for from this game is that this won't be exactly like tarkov or the cycle where you're very slow and like it feels like you're like stomping around your character like I, I want something to bring a little more 
violent speed and momentum. You know, and I don't say it needs to be super fast, but I, I think that's, picked up a little that's bit. what the like, genre needs, I think, to be widely adopted by people who play yeah. like Call of Duty uh, is to be a little more, you know, a little more player freedom and not so so damn cumbersome. Um, and and, I, and I'm I, I, to have the chance to give that feedback when the game's not already 85% done to me, I, it, it feels valuable. Like I, I was, yeah. I was excited to be able to do that because 90% of the time when you play a beta and the game's coming out in two months, they're not it's bad Nothing news guys. They're change. not changing jack shit. Right. They might fix you, a bug. You got a network test. <laughs> yeah. They might fix a bug, but they're not redesigning their game based on what you're, what you're telling them. Like the game's already mm-hmm. finished. Basically might polish it up a little bit, but it's, uh, I was excited to be part of the process and I had a guy on TikTok accuse me of being like a paid influencer for the game. Like, why are you hyping this up? You know, you're obviously being paid. And it's like, no, dude, because, you know, like I, I trust this studio. I like the brand and I, I'm excited to be part of it. And that's that's it. Like, I think it's OK to be skeptical about like where sure. your investment is going. But, you know, it's Doc has, I think, at least created an image and a brand for himself that he could be pretty authentic with himself. Yeah. You know, he had, you know, he came out with his Dr. Suspect like model and everything like that, like the entire persona. And, you know, he, and I think it was unnecessary, very unnecessary actually for him to come out whenever he talked about, you know, the things that he and where he's going like personally with his wife and stuff like that and went MIA and then mm-hmm. came back. And, you know, even through that, the entire process of him going from Twitch to YouTube, he's been pretty honest. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't always release all those details. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's, there's legal ramifications. There yeah. Yeah. So I think he's been pretty honest. And so far, there, I don't think Doc has done anything to really, like, make anybody feel concerned about it. Yeah. The only thing that I, and this is what pissed me off the most, honestly, was I think it was a Kotaku article that says Dr. Disrespects NFT shooter. Yes, That's what I saw that. I think it was Forbes. I think Forbes Might have been did Forbes. that. It was somebody big. It was journos bringing journos, yeah. bro. Yep. And I was like, that is such a horrible way for you to try and introduce this person's product. Make people angry. That's not, yeah, you're doing it to to draw to drive yeah. clicks. Agreed. Um, and then same thing happened like with that one guy. Um, Paul, Ru- not Paul Russo. Uh, something. Uh, he's like a Destiny like fan. Yeah, that's the guy really I'm talking game. about. That's what I saw. He called yeah, it an okay. NFT shooter. Yeah, like he made that he made that up and he tried playing victim. Like, why is everybody attacking me? And it's just like you could have just like There's, reached out to him to, uh, and to see, do that. I really feel like it, and I mean, you corrected me once, uh, rightfully so, when I referred to a game as like a, a Kojima game. And, you're, and you, you said something like, you mean, you know, like Kojima Productions. And that's totally that's the case with this game, too. Like, yes, the Dr. Disrespect is the face of this game. But there's there's Robert Bowling involved in this game, who was like literally one of the the faces of Call of Duty in its heyday, the day that people look back back on like modern the original Modern Warfare and the original Black Ops and stuff. Like this guy was highly he was basically leading the community, the Call of Duty community at that time. And he was Call what y'all are all calling for right now. To yeah, come back. He, you know, there's the development team is like Halo and Call of Duty and Gears of War people, and it's so it's like. You can dis you can distrust Doc and dislike Doc all you want. That's fine. Like it's not for everybody. Nobody's for everybody. Um, so, but it's like question. there's other there's a development team here, guys. You know, like it's not Doc yeah. sitting there coding the game and then like, oh, they're gonna love this. You know, uh, Doc hasn't really like replied to anybody's uh, like, criticisms, has he? Uh, I've seen him like indirectly say some stuff like i've uh, some of the stuff Paul Tassi like, was that guy's name by the way paul tassie was yeah yeah i haven't seen him like directly do that but i've seen him like indirectly say like stuff like um when people are like obsessing over the nft thing like like mm-hmm. stuff like you, when you actually see like where this is going like you, you're gonna like regret like doubting yeah. it um, yeah no i i agree i think i i foresee that too yeah um but I, I asked that because I don't want him to go down the cyberpunk or the CD Projekt Red rabbit hole where he's just like, y'all guys are like, this is the promises that, you know, the, the team and I myself will deliver for this game and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because he hasn't done that to mm-hmm. my knowledge. Um, and I say that because like my friend on Twitter, he was just like, yeah, but he's like overhyping the game. And I'm like, you know, this wasn't really labeled on the product line of mm-hmm. the website like it doesn't say this game looks better than call of duty i was like this is his this he is made his some comment like that on stream 
Yeah. He was like, my game looks a million times better than this. Like he's saying that one clearly out of passion. Of course he's biased. Why right. would he not? Why would he character. say like, yeah, <laughs> why, why would he like talk shit about like his own game? Like, man, dude, this game in Call of Duty looks really good. My, my I game mean, can't compare. I, I do kind of get, I mean, we've all said it and I don't know why this is surprising. I'm excited for Modern Warfare 2 too. I hope it's the best Call of Duty in, in ever. Seriously, I, I, I do hope that. But we all know that Call of Duty has looked and played the same for 20 years. I, I think that's more what Doc is getting at. Like, okay, yes, this new Call of Duty engine looks great, but, you know, it looks like the same game, just with a higher fidelity, you know? Mm -hmm. um, higher fidelity for me to put everything on low and anti aliasing yeah, off. Yeah, and exactly. Off. And, you know, one thing that I, I think that Midnight Society has been promising and they've lived up to it so far is we are going to involve fans every step of the way. We are going to deliver you playable builds and we're going to take your feedback and we're going to, and they've been, they've been really big at, on that since they announced it. And I mean, they were only in step one, so it's way too early to say, um, but so far they, they I mean, it seems insane to me to have a playable build this summer. Like I was like, I don't know that they're going to make that, you know, like that doesn't seem realistic. And then they did. I think people need to temper their expectations and read a fucking book on what yeah. like game development looks like. They need to at least like watch like the old God of War mm -hmm. and like Halo 2 Vidox from Bungie. Like they yeah. need to really see what those like trenches look like. And that's mm -hmm. what they actually call them. They call them the, the trenches. Yeah. They need to know what crunch means and what that looks like. Because a lot of people genuinely don't understand that, you know, these games are hard to make. And I, yes. every podcast I say it, ga video games should not exist but they do because yeah, people like a miracle. give a shit yeah like they it it's the it's a huge deal and oh. like the fact that these expectations are so high just shows like you know high arrogance and ignorance of what game development looks like and how it is to address problems and fix those things i'm really interested to see how the gaming industry reacts to this and how 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 this ends up so two years from now when this game is actually going early access or three years from now or, or whatever the heck you know however long it's going to take um you know d is there a payoff here it, it, it is involving the fans going to build build a lot of hype so when it actually does release because i i think there it's a it's a high risk high reward play right so like what they're doing like releasing this very early build that they had to have known three quarters at best of the internet is just going to be like this is garbage like you know like you can't even do anything in this in this game you know like they had to know that like the people are going to yeah. be like this doesn't but if they waited two years and showed a much more polished version of this game that that early reception would have probably been um much better so it's going to be interesting to see when the game actually comes out if then they'll be able to flip the script and say look, our game looks like this because we promised our fans that we would involve them. We've took their feedback and now this is the product that you get. And if people, if it's really good, um, that's like a huge victory for them. Yeah, um, no, massive. And, you know, I'm pretty sure these people at the at Midnight Society are great, like are grinding through all the feedback that they got. Oh yeah. Like the point of the of this deployed version of the game is for the feedback. And they only, they more than likely care only and exclusively for y'all's feedback, so. Yeah. I hope everyone did actually supply feedback. I don't. I couldn't imagine that you spent all this money on that on that NFT purchasing, which wasn't super duper expensive. But that's fifty bucks. Yeah, like that's still a lot of money, especially in today's economics. It's buying a game, basically. Yeah, but no, I'm pretty sure that they're looking forward to all that feedback, and you know, best of luck to them, and, and can't wait to see what else happens. Yeah, six for weeks. Sure. That's, that's incredible. For sure. Uh. Puffer's co-host has arrived. <laughs> I always love when Jade High's dog joins the joins the podcast. One week he's gonna tell us uh, if he prefers Xbox or or PlayStation, and that will ultimately settle the debate. Yuki, Xbox or PlayStation? She sat down. <laughs> I'm going with uh, Nintendo on that response. No, nah, she's gonna go with me. I'm the best gaming console because I get all the food and the cuddles and the butt scratches. All right, so there was a lot of video game platform console wars numbers out this week, and at least one of them was a, like an all-time first for the gaming industry, I think. So Sony announced a 37% decline in profit over last their last fiscal year. So 
that's made their their profit dropped one third like that's like i'm not trying to be a doomsayer here i'm not saying they're going out of business but that's a concern to the people at yeah. sony like that's a big freaking deal so i wanted to bring this up i don't want to forget to say it but I mean, if they're looking, are they looking exclusively at PlayStation 5 engagement? Because I'm pretty sure that this was just the company's. True. This was literally just their profit. What I'm talking about now, 37% drop in profit over okay. 2021, which was in fairness to them, the COVID year when everybody was inside was home. And anything. yes. OK, because if it was like isolated to PlayStation 5, I would at least give the benefit of the doubt. And I still kind of do like not everybody has a PlayStation 5. Right. Economy is really tough right now. You know, spending that kind of money on a console that hasn't gone up in price. Thankfully, good job. Um, it's, it's just a pretty hard number to wrap your head around. Yeah. But no, if it's this overall profits, that is interesting. to know. that's bad. Uh, yeah. I, the COVID thing, understandable, but yeah. You know, you've got more fans in because of COVID. You should right. see at least a still increase in right. profit. So I, I do wonder what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't. What I don't know, and I'd really like to, if I had access to their numbers, I could, I could literally audit them and figure this out. What I don't know is if like the money that they spent on like Bungie, for example, came out of there already. Because if it did, that was like billions of dollars, right? So like, if yeah. if that was included in there, then that that could like obviously I represent would be. i wouldn't think so either i think that'd be like a separate budget yeah. um but i i don't know i didn't look into it deep enough but um xbox had a six percent decline in revenue uh which is not as bad but that's also revenue not profit they didn't give a profit number um this next one or two is extremely interesting more interesting to me uh meta Inc is increasing the price on their VR headsets by $100 yeah. on both of them. That um, was definitely interesting, yeah. Video game consoles and platforms generally tend to go down in price as, as the generation or whatever you want to call it goes on. This is a $100 price increase. So what do you think about that? I think they don't have anything in development for another headset. <laughs> I what think that they're I think that they're pretty confident with whatever the headset is that's currently on the market that they're offering. Yeah, I mean I've heard good things about it. Yeah. Um but well, if it ain't fixed, don't break or if it ain't broken, don't fix it. They said their um, costs are way up. That's what they said. That it's basically like every other industry, our costs are up and that's why we're increasing our price. Do you buy that? Yeah. I do partially. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I partially kind of buy it. I'm pretty sure there's more to it that they don't want to say. I still don't think they have another system that's being worked on or developed on. Uh, I've heard they have a lot of them, like three different headsets, but they're like far out, like 2026 or Whenever 2028. Whenever they acquired Oculus, though, I mean, I don't think they've really expanded on that team in general. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very arrogant. Of yeah. it, so I just not arrogant, but ignorant of like what's, what's right. been happening since Oculus got uh, acquired. Once, once Oculus got acquired, like the entire VR, like, a extravaganza just completely went off my radar i'm like mm. okay you know what htc oculus i don't know what the hell is going on anymore there's cardboard versions of uh, vr now so. yeah <laughs> um, uh, i don't know what's going on but you know i saw that and i was like damn that kind of sucks i may i now yeah. know that i missed out on buying it cheap when i did have well, the chance to buy it that's what's interesting to me is i think by the numbers uh like last year like 2021 uh, was like the most successful year for VR yet. And like the last holiday, I know they killed it. Like Oculus Quest 2 did like really, really well. Mm -hmm. So you would think, I was kind of expecting, and I know the economy is crazy right now, so I understand what I'm saying here. But um, I was like, man, if they cut that price, like even like 50 bucks, they're really going to be like, because they're generating a lot of word of mouth. All these people are buying headsets. Now, if they cut the price like 50 bucks or something, you know, like they could really get more people going. And now they're like, oh, we're going the other way. We're raising the bar a hundred dollars. Yeah. So I, it surprised me. And I think it might um, hurt their momentum a little bit. I don't think it will, to be honest. I don't think that VR adoption is at a, like a, an all time high right now. I think there's a lot of cool VR content coming out though. Yeah. Like every time I'm on TikTok, there's someone doing something in VR now and it's mm -hmm. not VR chat related, which is super fucking cool. It's not you got knuckles. It's not like, it's not like what we were talking about earlier with system sellers anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a system seller for VR just yet. Yeah. Um, and until the social experience gets better for it and you can start doing things that aren't going to cost you a 
bunch of money for a full VR experience, like mm. a full like tracking system. Like I'm pretty sure it's just going to yeah. still stay a little bit, a little bit low. Definitely yeah. not going to be hitting that pie chart of, you know, this is the gaming industry con or platform adoption look mm -hmm. like. So yeah, very niche still. It's just the it's it's just weird, man. Like the first time ever we've seen a. That is the first time ever. Yeah, you've seen stuff like weird. you've. I think you've seen like price increases hidden, like uh before, like oh hey we uh we increased the size of the hard drive on our console and we put out this new version and we had to raise the price, you know, like fifty bucks or something. Like I think people normally you offset that that increase or with like a new skew that includes something right like oh yeah. or we're gonna give you a free game or something like that you know to hide behind and this is just like no nope, we're straight up raising the price 100 bucks on you guys and that's i'm mark zuckerberg so sweet man the audacity of like every black friday deal ad now saying get the oculus vr for 2.99 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there'll be that sale for that cheap but who knows i don't think so either i'll probably stick uh some bad vr game with it instead like that one i hate to say it but when respawn announced the medal of honor game for vr i was like oh man that could be like you know vr's killer app is respawn you know and then it came out and like the game really sucked and they won an oscar for, though for the documentary that they made about the game's development <laughs> so kudos to them i guess good job yeah yeah um i wanted to bring up the xbox one like six percent down in revenue like I don't think that's exactly a terrible number. You never want to go negative, right? No, why? Um, this fucking no, why Halo went. didn't make any of its I was about to bring it numbers. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to say the same thing. I was going to be like super smug and be like, well, if you released a fucking game over your holiday season that was worth spending money on, you'd probably be going positive. Well, I think it, I, I still, I still swear for their first like month of content or two, even I'd give it two. The game was fine. They had enough because it was it was Halo was back. The hype was high. Everything that they delivered was was pretty high quality. Launch went over smooth. But then they needed to start having stuff kick in and they had nothing. We're halfway through the season of season two. Dude, finally, three months later. Dude, I looked. <laughs> so I played Halo over the past week a bunch of times. I finished the pass there, that little event pass. And I did my I did ranked placement matches in the cross play. Uh, playlist using a controller and i placed diamond three which i couldn't believe um Jesus christ yeah but uh I, I was thinking that i was like yeah the next season's got to be rolling around like what maybe like another month or two and i looked and we still got like at least like three more th three four more, more months, months three maybe more, three more no three more months starting today today but is august 1st i was so. just like baffled by that though i was like that is so far away can't believe we've been playing halo infinite for 10 years already can't wait yeah. for halo infinite too yeah <laughs> I, it was just like i was like you know i think i could play this content you know for another month you know like the next stuff's gotta be oh coming God, soon no. and i was like no. dude three more months like but the forge stuff is looking insane like dude super cool people have already remade like every halo map ever in forge and forge isn't even out yet people have remade games of games man PT. i saw people remake like pt i've seen people remake resident evil 2 i've yeah. seen people like do so like incredibly cool stuff. Somebody in like Twitter like yesterday that I replied to was just like, I wonder why it took three for three so long to implement Forge. And I'm just like, honestly, I'm surprised Forge isn't its own separate game, its own yeah. separate SKU, because like this is unreal. Didn't they do that with Halo 5's Forge? Didn't they release it on PC as like a separate? They did. Yeah. Um, and they included like custom game browsers in mm -hmm. there too, which was pretty too, which was pretty cool. Um and what was also really cool about that is those maps were cr like cross transferable, so they would also work on Xbox, which I thought was a really cool little cool touch. Halo Five, you came too early as usual with Microsoft, and you left later than you should have. Um, in this case, I'm really excited to see what what Forge does because like that scripting thing has like so much potential, mm -hmm. so much potential. That's what's really taken this game so long to get developed is Forge mode. Honestly, yeah. I think. Everything I've seen, I think Forge is going to definitely uh, not so much like just Forge existing, because I always say, like, what percentage of the population actually makes something in Forge? Probably like 2%, if that. But the stuff mm -hmm. people make in Forge is going to start bringing people in, like... Oh, 100%. And there's already been, like, data mines and, like, you know, people found, like, how the roots of the of the uh, 
main menu, the user experience looks like. And they're bringing back file share, which is great. Mm -hmm. That's what made, it is what every Halo person will tell you, myself included. File share was the greatest thing. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, it was amazing. Ever done. Dude, so incredible. And then, like, every other game, like, tried to replicate it. Just couldn't do it. Far Cry right. was probably the second best. Their, their, uh, uh, their theater mode, too, was, was literally miles ahead of anything anybody does these days still. Yeah, it's so good. So they're bringing back file share. And I think that they need to double down on the file share system uh, overall. They need mm -hmm. to make this experience super accessible, not across every device necessarily, but they need to make it super accessible across every able platform they're able to reach. Mm -hmm. Because this needs to be able to you know, be discoverable. So maybe like in this case, perhaps, you know, Microsoft like doubles down a little bit more into like what TikTok can offer and just start doing like, you know, TikTok creation bids. They did try to buy the TikTok. Halo Forge. They did try to buy TikTok, China. Um, but, you know, again, that's just my opinion. I am really stoked for Forge mode. We're going to get all of our cool stuff back. And I'm really excited to see what happens in the third month. Uh, you know, uh, Joseph Staten is back in the house because Bungie is quiet. They're not hot or Bungie. Three for three is quiet. <laughs> See what they did there? That wasn't a mistake. They're quiet. They're not talking. Mm -hmm. Like the only time they ever talk is whenever they have something to either announce yeah. or uh, they're doing like a community play session and they're not even releasing like vague information in yeah. there either. Yeah. So things are working. The gears are spinning and I appreciate yeah. that. And Justin Staten mentioned it previously. Like if we talk too much, we set higher expectations. Yeah. And they're like, he's like back in the bungee days, we stopped talking. We didn't talk. So that way we can blow everyone's minds away. Mm -hmm. So. At this that point, I think that is what's best out. for them to do it is to have put their heads down and work. I mean, it silently came out this week, like uh, Halo Waypoint now has all, like everybody's stats on it. Like, like just came out like out of nowhere. Like they didn't even really make any like big deal about it. They're like, oh, now all your like the old Bungie.net days, like your Halo Infinite mm -hmm. stats are available on Halo Waypoint. And I was like, good. Like, that's like a sign of progress. Like it's one small little thing, but it gives me hope that there's you know, all these little teams at 343 who have been tasked with, mm -hmm. okay, one one feature at a time, kind of like they did with MCC, we're going to get this right, you know? And I'm really I'm really hoping that Joe Staten himself ends up just taking over as, like, the studio, like... I think Frankie um, needs to go, dude. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie, honestly, I think Frankie is probably, like, a good thing, to be honest. I don't think he's actually ruining anything. He's <laughs> quite... Li he's... Li he's he came out with like some weird problematic things that happened like a couple he's, weeks ago, which I was like, that's weird. He said something about he's, porn. He's too. definitely said weird shit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he's said some weird shit, but I mean, dude's been around since Halo. 2, yeah. And yeah. You know, two, three ODST and reach were also contributions of his efforts. So I don't want to see him go. Uh, and he's always been quiet. That's why he's always on reset era. So that way he can have his weird <laughs> moments. So I'm not excusing him. Do better, Frankie. But the only person that definitely needs to go his name Bonnie is Ross. Stinkles. His name is Bonnie Ross. Her name's Bonnie Ross. No, no, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, his reset era name is Stinkles. Stinkles, yeah. I mean, I've said it a million times before. I think Bonnie Ross jumping in as the uh, head of Three Four Three. I think she looks at it as a business, not so much as a. Uh, she's a Microsoft as a, person. As a, as a, she's a Microsoft. She's a yeah. VP of Microsoft yeah. and a head of Three Four Three Industries. Yeah. That's that's her position. Yeah. And she doesn't whenever, strike me I, as the gamer type. Yeah, she um, like whenever uh, 343 was first built, you know, they interviewed her. And at the time, you know, I saw this as like, oh, wow, like I had stars in my eyes. She was like, I see Halo reaching out to the same potential as uh, Marvel, the mm -hmm. same potential reach as Star Wars. And I was like, dude, that's incredibly cool. Right. And now in hindsight, I look at Marvel and I look at Star Wars I'm like, oh, please, God, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want yeah. that at we, all. We saw the show that we got. We all saw it, guys. Uh you did good with Mandalorian. Keep doing that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and I mean, the Halo show needs to go. If I don't think Joe Staten's going to stay around long, though, he's a bouncer. I worry about that, he's, too. He's moved he's a gonna, lot. He's yeah, he'll move a lot. If he takes over studio head, I will always accept that. And I think that's a good direction. I'm but. hoping I'm hoping that because he has bounced around a lot and now that he's like back home that he's like, OK, this is where I want to be. You know, I, yeah. I'm hoping the reason that he's bounced around is just because he personally wasn't like super happy with what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope, I hope now he's like, okay, this is because I, if anything, I think three, four, three could use that, that con the consistency, um, and, and the charisma that he, that he brings, because 
you know, Frankie as whatever his position technically is, um, he, he does stay kind of in the shadows quite a bit, except for like lurking on forums. Um, and I, I don't, um, I don't think that's great for like the face of the, fir- the they, we need great. a new face of Halo right now. Right. Like it was so weird when Halo 4 came out, he started to shine, kind of like show himself a little bit more. I don't know yeah. if that was by his decision, but like a lot of weird stuff was happening with Halo 4. Like he was on the Conan O'Brien show and I met him. He's definitely an awkward guy. Like, yeah. I met like my it was funny. My first time I met him, it was at TwitchCon or no, San Diego Comic Con. And then literally like three days later, uh, I go to New Orleans to uh, support an MLG event for Halo 5 and Gears of War 4. And he's there and he sees me. He's like, are you following me? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I told him, like, I worked for Microsoft at the time and he was he was a nice guy. Yeah. But he's deaf. Like you could, you know, when you strange. feel, yeah, <laughs> you know, awkward people when, you, yeah, when yeah. they're in your presence. He is an awkward person. Um and like whenever Halo 4 came out, he like did this thing where he spun around in a chair, took off his glasses. He's like, I am not Halo Savior, so please stop saying that I am. And I was like, no one really needs you to do that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and no one thinks that. that down. No one thinks that. Uh, I think that maybe a little bit of that attention got to his head I, that he thought. I he always that. thought it was kind of odd. No disrespect to him. He was like a community manager or whatever he was. I always thought it was a little odd that they took the community manager and then put him in charge of like the entire studio. And I'm like, yeah, that's so, a very different role, you know. Like, I'm not he was not he wasn't community manager. Good, whatever, whatever he was, he wrote originally. He wrote the updates, the this week at Bungie or whatever they called them back in the day, and then I don't know yeah. where he ended up title wise. And anthology and like lore curator is okay. what his position is. Uh, the community manager is uh, Brian Gerard. No, I mean at uh, Bungie, he, his position at, at Bungie. No, 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 same, no, same thing. It was, like, okay. he wasn't. Yeah, he he was doing the same thing at Bungie. Okay. Brian was actually the community manager since Halo 2. Is that Sketch? Yep, Sketch. Okay. Who I also um, don't think is very good at his job, but anyway. I think he's great <laughs> at his like job. Seems like a likable guy. That... Dude, as soon as he came back on, like things started getting better, bro. I yeah. promise you. Like yeah. Halo 4 and Halo 5 were very... Like 343 was so completely out of touch with his uh, audience because their community in fa- manager, their in lack fairness thereof, to him, he hasn't fine. had a lot of material to to talk about either. <laughs> I think he's been doing a great job. I just still think, again, it's like the weird, like, don't really talk if he's you don't really cut his need hair, to. man. He's got to cut his hair, honestly. It, it looks great, though. He's taking good care of it, honestly. Um, as compared to Jake me, Sucky I, too, hair, like, I see Jake day. Sucky and I'm like, man, you got to clean yourself up. You just your reporting's amazing, but just. I kind of like I like Jake Sucky for his reporting, but I also hate what he reports on at the same time. I don't like when he gets into drama. Yes. Other stuff is he is really, really good at. I do not mm-hmm. like his drama stuff, but I, in fairness, I, would I don't like anybody's drama, really. Yeah, I definitely prefer Jake Sucky over like Dick Serto when it comes to drama. Yeah. But at least Dick Serto doesn't. Or what's that bearded idiot who kind of got canceled? Oh, uh, uh, I know exactly who you're talking <laughs> it's about. It's from New York, too, and it Keem, kills Keem Star. Keemstar. Keemstar. Yes. See, when I first heard that, I didn't know like what he even did, but I heard there was like a prominent, this was like five years ago at least, content creator from upstate New York. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, I got to support this guy. And, like, I looked into him a little bit and I was like, God damn. Like, I do not want to support this guy. He he was all right, honestly. He was tolerable to the point where she's like, this guy is annoying and he's very disruptive. That I was like, you know what? I kind of accept it. But then he just became extremely problematic. Yeah. Not even like political wise, honestly. Like I disagree with his he's public, going political after stances. Everybody. But he goes after everybody. And it's I'm just annoying. like, you need to chill the hell out, man. There's times to hold people accountable. And and being good at that is a serious skill. Like when you need to own somebody and put them in their place. That That's good. He's done some great stuff, too. But his, it, his, that's all he does. That's all he has. And it's like, dude, you got to. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of. He, of his he caught all. fire, and he's not gonna let go of it. I I get it. Uh, but people who actually have this is a weird segue. Who have done a really good job rebranding themselves. Logan Paul. I think he's been doing a pretty, oh, pretty decent job. I mean, he's a. I, I've heard he's a very skilled professional wrestler, which is, which is uh, no good for well, him. I, I mean, guess. that's that's where I went down the rabbit hole. The and this really. was like recently, like uh, you know, he was on the, he was on WWE. Yeah, did some really good wrestling stuff like that. But people on Twitter were saying like all the good deeds that he's been doing, not good deeds, but just reshaping himself and like, yeah. you know, making sure he's not doing stupid things like he's done in the past. And he's been a, he's been a pretty decent guy. Good for him. I was the person I thought you were going to say, but I can't say the person who I was going to say. I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh, man. What we got next? We got 
pretty much nothing. I'll tell you the games that are coming out soon, though. And well, we do have, I don't know what, we have. <laughs> there's a, another rumor out there. We've, this has happened, like this has come and gone like three, four times. And I believe it to an extent. There's a rumor again that Google Stadia will be shutting down before the end of the year. And Google has responded and said, this is not true. We're fully supportive of Google Stadia. But the source that reported it is like pretty strong. So my feeling is Google Stadia as we know it is being shut down. They're kind of going to migrate it to a different yeah, service. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen too. I thought they like already confirmed that they're using Stadia technology for completely other like yeah, tech endeavors. That's what I think it's. I think Stadia itself is going to go on like maintenance mode. And I mean, if it's not already, I mean, Jesus, I mean, it's not doing very well. And they have like such a good lineup of like their YouTube stuff going on right now with like Tim the Tatman. They've got uh, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Lupo. Dr. Lupo. Uh, they've uh, got they've courage. got uh, Lily Pichu. Doc. They got Courage. Like everybody's mighty. They just got YouTube. Myth. Uh, yeah, they just got Myth. That's who I was thinking of. Duh. Um, like everyone's going. The only person who's technically not over there yet is probably more like more than likely just like nick Merckx. yeah honestly he got paid that's why <laughs> yeah paid he got paid and he got his contract done like like less than like i think two years ago too so he's yeah probably I think it's only about a year ago I, I i mean you could yeah, argue like, i think i think him i think pokey um they got freaking xqc and mischief neither of the two i like Asmin Gold is on Twitch, I think, not because he has like a great contract. I think he's just there because he's there and he's kind of like, this is no disrespect to him. I think he would agree with this. He's just, he's too lazy to go anywhere else. He just doesn't care. Yeah. Like, that's, it's just where he is and that's just the way it's going to be. Man, I don't know who I hate more whenever they're not playing games, Tim or Asmin Gold, because <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tim whenever like Tim, like, well, he'll just talk and just constantly just spectate everybody instead of like actually play the game. And he'll just use that time. He'll spend two hours eating. He's from like an hour away from me, which I uh, I can appreciate that much about him, at least. <laughs> he was an hour away. But he's in Florida. Yes, yes. He's from Syracuse yeah. originally. Yeah, Syracuse. Um, but like he'll just sit and talk and eat and like just spectate Warzone players. And then Asmongold Warzone, will get dude. like on a political like, you know, one to two hour rant. Asmongold like, is literally just that that freaking goblin mode gamer that who was in the right place at the right time and he literally like lives in like a basement and he doesn't care and he doesn't groom himself and he doesn't care and he's got millions of dollars and he doesn't care and doesn't care if his stream I, died tomorrow i really don't think he would care like he would just like yeah whatever like dude i got i got this money and whatever i'm just gonna keep, keep playing mmos there's um this uh, content creator on TikTok, his name is Waifu Watchers. He made a TikTok that included a fake quote from Asmongold. And the joke was, uh, I will never um, date uh, an IRL girl. I'd rather date 2D anime girls instead. Oh my God. He and is... the quotes, oh my God, it was so awesome. No, that's wasn't it right here. Um, God dang, Chase, why'd you post this? All right, I'm not going to be able to find it. I, I think Twitter might have taken it down. Oh, wait a minute. Do you think... This is a serious question. I didn't plan to discuss this, but it just came to me. But, like, what do you think about, in general, like, like, like something like Asmund Gold, right? Like, he has basically become, on accident, the authority for MMORPGs. And, 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 and no, with, I mean this in no disrespect to him, but I'm, I'm going to say it. He's probably not the most qualified or uh to to be the face of mmos but the mmo community just goes to, it almost funnels like through him at this point you know and like do you think that that's a problem like do you think the developers of mmo games are like god damn it you know like as one goal just just like you Asmongold know all that again ruining yeah, my yeah. life but, like do you think that that's like a problem like or do you think it's just like i don't know it's just the way of the world <laughs> I think that I think that's just like it for every influencer. I'm pretty yeah. sure that every developer has a problematic like influencer playing their yeah. game or at least talking. Tyler one for MOBAs. <laughs> Tyler one for MOBAs. I mean Tim like I literally love Tyler, Doc. But... No, I love Tyler too. He's hilarious. Um 
redemption arc, you know, someone who got literally banned for being the most toxic person in the entire legal of community. He's still pretty toxic. But... He's still pretty toxic, but he's he's done better at like, saw... representing the toxicity. Saw... What did he say yesterday? I think he said that uh, he, he, he literally wishes that everybody at Riot was homeless and that they don't deserve <laughs> to be like earning uh, like paychecks and like... Uh... <sighs> Oh, I think I think Riot's probably learned that they they themselves understand what the toxicity is set for League. Kind of just gotta embrace it. I think at that yeah. point, like Tyler One is gonna be like one of the phases of our game, whether we like it or not, and we just gotta roll with it. It's it works for marketing too. He like he did a phenomenal job at Worlds. Um, I was literally listening to like Doc and Tim the Tatman talk about Halo, and mm -hmm. Doc's like absolutely crapping all over Halo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doc is also crapping all over like Call of Duty, like yeah. he, like this entire time he's been playing Call of Duty all day, and yeah. like he's he, all day he was bitching like about it. It. Like, this game sucks, dude. And I'm like, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. I was just all I was gonna say is I tried to download Warzone again last night because a friend wanted to play it who had never played it, and we played for like half an hour and we both uninstalled. I was like, dude, this game is not in a good place. I want to play like, it so much and have fun because it what looks I mean. so fun. Like, but I it's wanted not. to have fun with it. Like I, I had. Every intention of like, okay, this is different. I'll get to play this game with this friend who's never played it, and you know what? Something different. It will be yeah. fun. And like, we yeah. played it for like half an hour, and he's like, "I'm never playing this game again." And we both just uninstalled it. The, the I swear they're playing a different version of Call of Duty that we aren't that we don't have <laughs> access to. Like the game, their they're game looks bots. faster. Their game is faster. They have cooler engagements. Like everything is like so much cooler when they do it. And I'm not a type. I'm not the type of person that looks at it. And the influencer will be like, yeah, it's great because of them. Like, it really isn't, unless it's Tim, whenever he's actually playing for once. Yeah. But I was watching Doc, and I know Doc's not having fun. And I'm watching his gameplay, and I'm like, this is this looks awesome. I want to mm -hmm. have fun doing this. Yeah. And I just will never, ever have that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I am hopeful for Modern Warfare 2. I really am. But, yeah, me too. Um, I'm stoked for it, actually. And I've actually thought that Call of Duty had some hits in the past five, six years or so that they didn't get enough credit for like i thought black ops 4 was a really good game all around and blackout i still think was was really decent i miss blackout that is a battle royale i wish it was back I, I think activision really botched the modern warfare 4 remaster by attaching it to infinite warfare or whatever and then even when they released it solo it was like three years later and like 30 40 dollars and it's like yeah. that game there's no reason that the modern warfare remaster not the re not 2019 but the actual remaster of call of duty 4 um there's no reason that that game still shouldn't have like a vibrant like ongoing really good community because it's like an all-time great and they just totally botched it well i mean like, we know why it's because all well, the pro scene moves forward with it and call of duty's competitive scene is extremely loyal yeah well like they charge 30 dollars for it i mean <laughs> come on we'll see what happens with modern warfare 2 i'm just concerned that they literally threw pete davidson in there as like an influencer Dude. for their game that's so weird i got so disappointed at the movies so they're uh what was it two weeks ago i think uh my wife and i saw nope and before it there's a trailer for a new a24 movie and a24 is pretty darn good like they've really made they make the those like uh like a lot of low budget ish horror movies and like nine out of ten of them are like really good and uh there's this new one that i saw a trailer like, you know, first thing, the A24 logo pops up, so my interest is peaked. And, like, 30 seconds in the trailer, like, Pete Davidson's character gets introduced. And it's a horror movie. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, this movie's, I'm done. Like, I'm not watching it now. I'm like, literally, my I didn't even know if my wife really liked Pete Davidson or not. But when he popped up on screen, we both just, like, looked over at each other in the theater. And it was, like, this, like, mutual look of, like, okay, yeah, this one's out. <laughs> literally, no one asks for Pete. Pete Davidson literally does nothing. Like, he's... Yeah. He, he does nothing, and like, like maybe his stand-up was like okayish, but you know, he's basically an influencer he? now. That's he just is it. An influencer, but what is, who's influenced by Pete Davidson? I don't know. People drinking whatever brand of water that he stands. I guess I, I don't know. Well, that water must be Kim Kardashian's body water or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So uh, weird. His his role in Suicide Squad wasn't bad because he died like literally within the first three minutes of the movie. Ooh. His character's like he himself is a goofy looking dude in a yeah. goofy kind of movie. Like it kind of fit. That works. Like, that one right. is understandable. Yeah. You could honestly Pete Davidson in like in an Adam Sandler movie sort of makes sense. Fine. To think about yeah. It. That's fine. I'd be fine with in, that. In a comedy, 
I don't care what you do. It's it's like it's like when they started casting uh oh god when they put Vince Vaughn as one of the main characters of True Detective season two, playing like this most the most like mundane this like morally gray like character with this like very large like almost shakespearean vocabulary i'm like who thought this was a good idea like and, and i get the guy wanted probably wanted to break out of being like typecast right like i un i understand his desire to do that but it's like a this was not the role for you to do that in. you could have kind of like eased it in a little bit easier and like th whoever was involved in casting him as this like super serious like gangster dude it was just like no dude like how just uh. <sighs> That's unfortunate. I whenever I think of Vince Vaughn, the first two movies that come up to my head are Dodgeball, because it's uh -huh. a phenomenal movie. Um, and then second, it would have to it would have to be the breakup. And the only reason why that movie comes to my mind is because my mom watched the hell out of that movie whenever she divorced my dad, actually. Oh, that's so funny. I mean it's funny, that. but it's not. It's it's yeah, it's funny that it's not. I mean, hindsight, she could laugh at it too. But right. she watched a lot of that and Urban Cowboy. Like she loves Urban Cowboy and like that was the, that was the parents thing no that was my dad's thing for some reason i don't know what happened <laughs> are you serious or no 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 it, okay I'm not serious. that's pretty that's pretty, that pretty good my my mom liked broke back mountain they both watched it and you know my dad my dad's not exactly a vocal person but you know he Rip said ledger he said what he said he said what he said all right games coming out uh very soon uh Stray came out, by the way. We never really discussed Stray, and I don't want to discuss I, Stray, but... Oh, okay, I was about to say, I played you, you, some of you it. You can say what you think of it. It's a pretty game. <laughs> that's the review that's, right there. That's literally it. Like, you get to play as a fucking cat, dude. Like, I've played as a goddamn alien. Like, you think I'm cool playing as a fucking cat? Like, I've seen cats. Cats are cool, but they also suck. Like, why do I want to play as a cat? Like, you get to do cool stuff. I'm not gonna lie. But, like... Some it's people a, are saying it's a game of the year contender. It's thirty dollars, and it's not seventy dollars, so I'm content with that. Yeah, I honestly like. I was like, I'm just I gonna am... technically rent this game, get it on PlayStation Plus, and then just forget about it. And yeah. I was like, you know, thirty bucks isn't that bad. What's fifteen more dollars? I'm kind of. I, I am always glad that games like that exist. And kudos yes. to the development team because some, I think they're a new, a pretty small studio as well, probably on a smaller budget and. They've crafted something that's getting game of the year nods. So that that's yeah. awesome. Um, on a promo back at it again. Not my not my not my thing though. It's cool. It's a cool game. I have people come into my stream it. who know me and they specifically say just because they know I'm gonna like be like, no, that's stupid. Nope. They're, they're like, oh, when are you gonna stream stray? I'm just like, just dude, just get out of here. Like I just <laughs> My favorite thing about Stray so far isn't necessarily just the game, but Kotaku doing Juno things again. Um they made an article about the problematic dystopian culture or a uh, misappropriation of Chinese and Asian culture. The game portrays because. And like you play as a cat. <laughs> so with, like, they, lasers on its back. This person had like this entire thing about like, well, they're using the hats and like we've seen the the, the, the neon cyberpunk dystopian Asian setting so many times already. It's a trope mechanism to try and reel people in. And then, like, I didn't read the full article, yeah. but there's this uh, Japanese um, influencer that I follow, and he was just like, literally any Asian person reading this is going to look at this and say, who the hell cares? <laughs> I, I saw one. I, I really wish I could recall the details, but I saw one. It was a game. Maybe it was a movie. Maybe it was a TV show. I, can't, I really can't remember. I wish I could recall the specifics. But part of the plot, like, it, it's obviously, like, Yes, it's like a it's like a cultural stereotype or whatever, but it was it was supposed to be that way specifically. Like it's pointing that out. Like it's not hiding it. It's doing it on purpose and using that almost as like a plot element. And somebody was critiquing that that you know like it was a, like a cultural trope. But I'm like, mm -hmm. you understand that's literally a part of the plot, right? Like like point, yeah. Like, like that they're literally like leaning into that. They're not doing it like ignorantly and say and like misrepresenting things. Like they're they're doing it. Because it, it it's like, <laughs> like you're totally missing the point here. Like, I I think people just have like a hard time understanding that like a story is told in a specific setting for a freaking reason. Like, yeah. they're not doing like it's not everything is to kill a mockingbird where right. the writer wrote her entire anthology into the book as right. a fake story. Have you have you ever read? 
Have you ever read anything by Frank Miller, the creator of Sin City? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Like, like he, I mean, I loved his stuff like in high school. He wrote- uh, hey, Yo, what up with the raid? Sin City, a lot of like, uh, The Dark Knight, uh, The Dark Knight Returns is a classic graphic novel he wrote. He basically revolutionized Batman comics in like the 80s and made that, that like old gritty version of Batman. He was like the Wait, first who? one to do that. Frank Miller. Frank Miller. Uh, okay, interesting. But um, his stories are full of like, like totally like sexist views on women. Like all the women are like in the Sin City books, all the women are like scantily clad, gun toting, smoking cigarettes, like all that stuff, you know? And it's like you realize like he's doing that like on purpose. It's not yeah. like like and I'm and I'm not saying like I think if you asked him, you know, do you really think all women look that way? He'd be like no, that's ridiculous. Oh. You know, <laughs> that's insane. Like, th th I'm doing this because that's the like the creation that I am making. Like, this is the, yeah. you know, that's what I want to do. And people, people just overgeneralize and think the worst of everything ever. No one in the history of mankind in the ever linear timeline of our history has any when anyone ever been happy. You know? Yeah, that's true. People, <laughs> People, people have to think that like there's clearly some ul ulterior motive to this. Yeah, I hate, I hate social online politics, man. It's it's gotten so bad. But Thanks you know, for the, the raid, that's, demon. Uh, that's that's just like you know what happened with uh, my favorite thing with uh, <laughs> with Stray. <laughs> what? Well, you're like I, I mentioned. I was like, you know what my favorite thing about Stray is? It's not. Oh, even the game. I mean, let into that. <laughs> somebody said about in the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So uh, let's let's do our games coming out soon. Apex season fourteen starts next week. Uh, Cult of uh, the Lamb. Play August. Cult of the Lamb. I'm, I'm excited for. But, uh, no, no play Apex is trending right now on Twitter. Yeah. No, uh, no, don't play. Uh, no August Apex. No Apex August. One I two, actually one. think that this next season uh, sounds pretty darn good, especially because Kings Canyon is back and getting a pretty significant rework. So that's exciting for me. Is it gonna? It, I thought Olympus was gonna come back in ranked rotation. It might be in the ranked rotation, but uh, Kings Canyon is is the first ranked split, and uh, yeah, I saw Skull Town Skull Town's there. back. Uh, but they they made a lot of changes. They they redid it graphically. Um, a lot of good stuff, I think. I'm not excited about the new legend, and there's no new weapon, but the meta is changing a lot. Um, Call to the Land from Devolver, Rumbleverse from Epic Games, and Iron Galaxy. I'm telling you, this game is really good. It is a brawler battle royale with like a lot of like professional wrestling moves that you can do off of skyscrapers and stuff it's really fun mm -hmm. um i think the final super people beta is coming soon which i really think that they botched this and lost all of their hype by doing way too many play tests but is what it is i i keep trying to pitch like hey why don't we like look into super people for my work uh and they're just like nope don't do it not worth it and i'm like Hmm. It could go either really way. Bad... I was like, y'all guys have had really bad takes, and I've been right every time. So maybe <laughs> just listen to me on this one. I, I mean, I but do... it could go. It could go either way. Yeah. I I do think that you know the a lot of the PUBG community is definitely going to jump into it. I think the problem that it has now, and it doesn't mean it's like I'm not saying it's that DOA or something, but the problem I think is PUBG just launched what is arguably its best map ever. Uh, like I don't know, like two three weeks ago, and. Hmm. Um, I, I just think the PUBG community is not like desperate to get out right now. I don't think I'm pretty so. sure they're just interested to see what else is out there. You know, yeah, they'll try it if they haven't already. That's my concern is because they've done so many play tests at this point that everybody's tried it. And, you know, yeah, but we'll I see. mean, like, I didn't think come out, but, uh, as I was watching Co uh, Doc play COD, I was like, man, I wonder how PUBG's doing. I played it about a week or two ago. The new map is really good. It is really good. It's probably their is best map. Is the desync still like a really big problem in that game? I don't have those issues, but I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, that was like I my biggest turn off. Like it was uh, cheaters and desync that were my biggest complaints. I about did PUBG. see a speed hacker the other day, but that's the only yeah. one I've seen. <laughs> China number one. Uh, and Spider-Man PC comes out, I think, like next week, next week or the oh. week after. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Is it seventy dollars? Yeah, it is. This is Sony we're talking about. <laughs> I have no interest in it, to be honest. I I was never a huge Spider-Man guy. 
it was a good game it, it was i'm not saying the game's think. not great because i'm sure it is oh, it's okay. just not my personal like at this point in time it's not i'm not really excited for it uh what all right like, we got dr doom in chat too that's that's pretty sweet speaking of marvel what the heck i didn't know they sold fable anniversary on steam and why is it ten dollars and why is it typically 35 dollars retail <laughs> what See, dude that's what i'm saying like i mean the call of duty the call of duty 4 remastered thing like there's no way that game shouldn't be ten dollars or, or even free to play at this point like just do it you know like the, do how many people are that? buying the game at thirty dollars anymore like come on is it is the is the pc version of fable on game pass i have no idea the original og fable no fable anniversary no well, yeah it's not it's on Steam, but it's not on the Xbox Game Pass. That's interesting. Who knows, man? Uh, Call of the Lamb or Cult of the Lamb, though. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty stoked for that. I you yeah. mentioned it and I played it and I was like, all right, here's something I can I can get lost yeah. in. It's like for a it's of like hours. Zelda rogue like, also the weird like cult building mechanic that I don't know what to call yeah. it like Animal Crossing <laughs> and and Satan it's cute. all in one, yeah. It's cute. Um, I'm I'm having a typical difficult time trying to think about what I want to play it on because my friend was like, I want to play it on my Switch. And I'm like, I could why? See that. It, and he never answered me. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah. I want to play it on my Switch. I work from home. I don't really go anywhere. Yeah. Like, why do so I need to play it on my Switch? Was... And who, who knows? It might hit Game Pass. I might. That was really my problem because I, I owned a Switch for about a year. Um, that was my problem with it is I just played everything that I was going to play on it pretty much on PC. And I was like, I really don't need this thing. Like the only thing I played on it was Tetris 99 when I was laying in bed like twice. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was just like, I'm just a PC gamer at this point and I've accepted that. PC boy and a PC gamer. Is it, is it windows eight or is it Mojave? Was it windows? What, what was it? Vista? That's what it was. You remember those commercials? No, you don't <laughs> remember no. when Windows Vista came out and it was like hated by everybody. Uh, fun fact, I never really grew up around computers. Mm. OK, so Windows like, Vista I'd... came out. Here's a yeah. history lesson for you. <laughs> when, like when I was in college, I'm aware of the history. Just... And it, everybody hated it. Everybody, yeah, hated, everybody it. hated it. So then Microsoft's campaign to reverse it and it, they actually did turn it around, but it took like a year or two. They, they were doing commercials where they were letting people use their like new version of Windows Vista, the, but they removed the Windows Vista branding from it. And they told everybody that, that it was this new OS called Mojave. And uh, so all the, the point of it was all these people were using it and like, oh, this is really great. Like, what's this called? And then they would say, this is the new Windows Vista. And everybody would be like, oh, my God. You know, like that was the marketing campaign. But they were what all the telling hell? them that it was Mojave and everybody was like, what the hell is Mojave? And then they're like, nope, I'm glad you like it because it's actually the new version of Windows Vista. YouTube it. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I'll, it's I'll not YouTube worth your it. time. It's not worth your time. There's much okay, better things okay. to watch on YouTube. Um, as far as games, what are you playing? Uh, Apex, Halo Infinite, just for little bits and pieces. I did play some PUBG recently, like I said. Uh, mm -hmm. And I actually just the other night reinstalled uh, Crucify Me Now, I guess. But I, I reinstalled World of Warcraft because the new expansion is coming in September. And I just kind of want to dip my toes back in and, you know, familiarize myself and waste money. Okay. So, Did you have fun? I haven't even played it yet. I reinstalled oh. it, but I haven't even played it yet. I ask what games you're playing, not what games you install. Install. Not play. <laughs> do, do you do that? Do you ever install games and stare at them installed oh. for like months? Yeah, that's that's what happened with uh, a lot of my games on my Xbox. Right, I now. did that I'm with Control. I installed and uninstalled Control about three times and never played it. Dude, I was so upset and annoyed when Control came out on Game Pass, but it wasn't the updated SKU with like the 60 <laughs> frames per second mode. Oh. So I was like, this is stupid. I'm just going to buy the upgraded version. And I spent 40 bucks on it. I think it was worth it. I had fun, actually. It was a good game. I can't I, wait to see what Control 2 does. I did play uh, RE2 somewhat recently, but I think I told you that. The remake. The remake. I wouldn't want to do. I've been wanting to go into um, village so I could play the third person mode. I think that's interesting. Yeah, I do I'm think that's cool. That. I do think that's really cool. I have. I always have this like thing where I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna play an old ass game, which was like kind of what I was doing with Mass Effect. 
I completed Mass Effect 2 in all its entirety on Legendary Edition. Couldn't really migrate to Mass Effect 3. I confirmed my bias. I just genuinely don't like the game, despite even the ending. I'm not even there, and I'm like, I don't want to play this game. Um, is it Mass Effect so was 2 like, that Rex is shooting fish in that river when you find him that one time? Or is it 3? That is Rex is Mass shooting Effect. fish in, like, a river at some point. And that's, I don't know. I know Rex is, like... In Mass Effect One, he's shooting at the ocean that you're by because he's angry, and you got to calm them down. Maybe it is Mass Effect One. Doesn't. I don't think he's shooting fish though. I I I don't remember to be honest. Mass Effect Three did a lot of goofy things. Shepard, the entire universe is at peril, and here you are with a Hanar trying to figure out how to screenshot a movie. (laughs) Tell you, Um, I I always called. I don't know why I just remembered this, but I saw somebody post a screenshot of Tally recently. And uh, Normandy. Uh, all I can remember is how my friend and I always used to refer to her in conversation as Tally Mae Banana. <laughs> so Awful. stupid. I have a friend. Um, she loves Mass Effect, and she's a he- she loves Garrus. Like we talk, we always joke about who such we an romanced. overrated character. Not God. even great. Yes, he I is. Love he's him. not bad, he's awesome. but he's all, all the Garrus stands. I never understood him. Anyways, I was like, we were talking about who we romance and stuff like that. And it's always fun. You said uh, No, this I was playing Fem. I play Fem Shep. I think, oh, okay. I think um, what's her name? Je- not Jessica Taylor's her name. What's her name? I have the no voice idea. actress. Yeah, I don't know. She's a phenomenal voice actress. And I, I cannot go back to male Shepard. Like, it's just weird. I don't like it. Uh, and I always like romanced. Uh, oh, my God, I am brain farting right now. Liara, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I always dream of romance for Liara, but and in Mass Effect 2, you can romance her, but you don't get the achievement for the romance. So you have to. You absolutely have to pick somebody on here. <laughs> and, you know, straight white man here, you know, I was pretty comfortable and okay, you know, <laughs> romancing a woman uh, character. So whenever I have to romance a man, I'm just like, this is kind of weird. So I had to pick and That's choose. That's why I don't play female list, characters usually. I hate to say of, it, but there's usually some sort of like diversification option for you to choose woman. But I ended up uh, romancing Thane. Um, I don't know who Thane is. Thane is the assassin uh, who's dying. Was he like the like the? He's the green guy. A little he's, shadowy he's dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought his name was something else for some reason. He's cool. I think he's underrated. I don't think enough people hype him up. He's yeah, got like, okay. cool That's not the one I was story. thinking of. Yeah, he goes hard in terms of like combat and stuff like that. I love Thane, but I was like, I guess I got to screw the blue, the green guy now. They and then the I told her, I told her I was like, uh, yeah, and uh, now I'm on Mass Effect Three. She's like, oh, that's cool. She's like, you, uh, uh, what are you gonna do with Thane now that you're in Mass Effect Three? Go go back to Liara. I was like, oh no, I dumped his ass before I migrated <laughs> over. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's like, why'd you do that? Why'd you break his heart? The man's dying and he no longer has contact with his son. And I'm like, that's his problem. I'm going back with Liara and I don't want to have to fight her about it. <laughs> that's his problem. That's a good outlook. Uh, I, I remember Mass Effect 3 added some of the most like bro like characters too. There was like it Jacob James. and James and like, I was Jacob like, was they were so generic. Two. Mass Effect 2 Jacob was very generic, but he actually has a really interesting loyalty uh, mission that you got to work with. And damn, is Fem Shep super massive? Uh, he she wants that uh, Jay Cussy. What's like, uh, if I could, Was it? That's she's super horny. Like every time you interact with your, with the, with Jacob's Fem Shep, she goes just looking for a little talk, and she like does this, and I'm like, you're not going to. I'm not. I'm not into him. I was like, there's a million other men on this ship, and it's not Jacob. What was was it Mass Go Effect two minutes. or three that had that weird bug where like Jacob's teeth would become like really enlarged and his lips yes. were like they, yep. his teeth like almost floated outside of his head or something? Man, that uh, guy, that guy's teeth is like beautiful. They were um, pearly white, that's for sure. They were pearly whites. Um, but uh, I mean, like, yeah, I was so unfortunate that I had to, like do that to the thing. I think about it actually. I'm just like, so man, did I really have to do that to him. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not fighting with Liara now. I gotta send Fun you. Facts. Go ahead. Why, why you send that? Fun fact, I actually had an argument with Potato, my girlfriend, mm-hmm. about Whose Liara. real name is not Potato, but okay. Her name is Erica, yeah. Um, I, when Mass Effect was uh, announced for another game, I was like, 
super hype. You know how much I love Mass Effect. I was like, I'm super fucking hype. I cannot wait for another Mass Effect. Shepard returns. Let's go. There's Liara at the front of the screen. And I, I told her, that's my wife. <laughs> she she actually got angry at that. <laughs> like we fought like later, like after that. She was like, she like left the room, went to go in, like sit in the bedroom and lay in bed. <laughs> and like after the show was over, I'm like, are you good? She goes, I'm fine. And we talked, like we were like, bickering at each other about it it was the most un like it was the most wild thing i'd never have to probably just having a bad day about. she was probably just having a bad day it was a, it was a, and that was, was like the icing on it that's what i mean like there's just something it else was going on 100 percent something else going on and like i'll bring it up to her now and she goes yeah i don't know what the hell i was thinking yeah that's what i mean it's just a bad day <laughs> relationships or, or week like that. or a month or whatever um but uh, I, to my point earlier, like I didn't play wanting to play real like old games, um, so I was like, let me download Fable Three so I can complete the achievements off of that because it's the only Fable game I need to complete the rest of the achievements on. Saw the achievements and I was like, holy shit, I don't want to do any of this. Quit the game, and today I was like, really, really not today, but yesterday I was like, man, I really want to play Fallout Four. I want to play <laughs> Fallout Four so bad, dude. I see something. I don't know if we got anybody to raid. Are you out there, Maz? Do you know of anybody who's streaming right now in, in the Nem fam? Crunk? You're ready. I don't mean to cut you off, Jada. I was just trying to make a plan here because I know we're going towards the end. No, no, for sure. Totally understand. If you want to keep um, talking about your Mass Effect romance options, we got time. No, no, it's already over with. <laughs> I stopped playing Mass Effect and I said, and I All out. literally pumped. I pump and I got pump and dumped. I got pumped, did the dump. Did you? you <laughs> know, have I told you my my disdain for the Fallout franchise because of Fallout Three? Ever tell you this story? No. So no, I, I'm 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 enamored now. Why? So when I first played Fallout Three, there was a apparently I was not the first person to do this, but I was one of the few. There was this one companion that you could bring with you. His name was Fox. And he was yes. a mutant and he was immune to yes. radiation. That was like one of his abilities. And then I kept him with me the like the entire game. Like I didn't want to mess with I any know other companions. In the final spoilers, the final point at the end of the game, uh, you can you can you have to walk into that chamber and get like whatever it was and you die. Your character dies in you the died process. Of radiation. Yeah. And, and you could even <laughs> I think I think at, at first they you couldn't even like ask him to go in there, like which made no sense. It was like a giant like jump the shark. And it's then they, a huge override. They added an option later to ask him to go in there, and he's just like, "No, I can't go in there. It's your destiny to go in there." So you just die anyway, even though he could literally just walk right in, pick it up, and come back. Like here you go, no problem, dude. And then I think finally, like after like a long, long time, they added an option to like send him in there or something. But after that, I was so just like, dude. My immersion is shattered. I got a immune guy over here, and you just killed me because you wanted to. Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas are so guilty of horrible ways to end the game because they just straight up end it for you. You got to go back to your previous save. That's what Fallout Four fixed: is that once you complete the main storyline, you can continue on the rest of your journey through post pop apocalyptic wasteland. I still wasteland. need to play New Vegas because there's a character named Long Dick Johnson in it. Yeah, we we know you're you're enamored by Long Dick Johnson Johnson, um, but um, no, but when you play Fallout Four, I the character is based on me. If you didn't know, your name's not Johnson. Shit, my name's closer to Johnson than yours. My first name is well, actually John. I don't think Johnson is his name either. I think it's a play on words. <laughs> you think it's just Long? First name Long, last name Dick. Yeah, <laughs> Johnson's just a nickname he got. <laughs> yeah. Um, but man, I've just been wanting to play Fallout Four, and it's just like the same thing with Destiny. Same thing with like. Any MMO, you're, you see everything in front of you, and you're like, oh, you you you, blur, you you were edited when you leaned back by the microphone. What'd you say? I was edited. Oh, you mean I lost? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, lost. Uh, I said I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Oh, I don't okay. want to play. Gotcha. I'm overwhelmed just by thinking about playing it. But honestly, I've only been playing multiverses and Pokemon Unite, and I've been having mm, a phenomenal. I saw you time saying something it. about multi or uh, Pokemon Unite. You got a new rank or something, right? Yeah, I got the highest rank I did. I've sucked in my stubbornness to finally just go into the uh, Pokemon Unite Discord, form a Discord party, and just invite people in to mm. help me play throughout because everybody's a, a brain dead Dude, idiot I was thinking that about game. that. Like, after I placed Diamond 3 in Halo, I was like, you know, I really could push to get Onyx. And I'm like, 
and that's going to require me to like go in the halo discord and find like some people who will actually play with me so i'm not playing against four stacks as a solo yo what's up crunk yeah pokemon unite's the best bro it's a girl sis i'm afraid to talk to women <laughs> that's awesome though um no i love pokemon unite it's been really awesome and i just want to continue to grind until i can potentially hit ultra because i'm two like technical i'm one technical rank away from it like they have five to like one and you it's similar to apex like mm -hmm. you just keep grinding until you get to the next one so they have unique rewards similar to apex you unlock for reaching that specific rank and i reached I can't get to Ultra, and I want this because I'm a Decidueye main, a Decidueye's Pokemon. I, um, saying, I, have no, I have no idea what that is. I got you, old man. Uh, Decidueye's Pokemon. Meryl and, like, was the, the skins, last Pokemon that I was aware of. The skins that the, you have is based... They're pretty cheap skins, honestly. Like mm -hmm. Honestly, skins in Pokemon Unite are awful. Some of them are good, but <laughs> most of it is Pokemon, but with clothes. Mm. Um, but because and sunglasses I'm, and stuff. It's it's literally my, my main Pokemon in a top hat. Mm. <laughs> so... Uh, Multiverses, though, has been really good, though. Yeah, you're I've enjoying it? Lot. How's LeBron? Yeah. I still haven't unlocked him. I refuse okay. to spend any money on this game. Also, I don't have money to spend on this game. <laughs> good reason not to spend money on a game, then. Dude, uh, like, everything's why, so expensive, man. So many gamers need to understand that, man. If you don't have money to spend on a video game, don't do it. Don't buy that new skin. Just don't, don't do it. Yeah. Well, thankfully, I've put enough time into Apex to realize that some skins are just awful and you don't really need to buy it. Although their new anime skins are actually pretty cool. I will. I will and Apex? That. Yeah. Apex the, uh, skins constantly disappoint me. Constantly. They constantly disappoint. They do have a few bangers, there's, though. Yeah, there's like, a couple good ones. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple good ones in there. Um, Mass Effect Wraith will always be top notch. Uh, Cat Skin Wraith. Wraith has all of the cool skins, let's be real. Um, but <laughs> I'm the Revenant, Green Ranger is Seer right now. I'm loving that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that one's pretty dope. Uh, and the Revenant one that just came out with the anime pack. Yeah, that too, one was that good. One's, that one's pretty For dope, sure. actually. Oh, all man. right before we go before we raid crunk i think um did you hear about that new diet diet yeah it started down in san antonio actually oh god no it's, what it's called what it's called it? it's called slim slow <laughs> do i need to look it up <laughs> if you want our, to. Diet, our diet is barbacoa and big red bro i'm not i don't know what to tell you uh all right it's getting worse dude like we're like we're, we're infusing things that shouldn't need to be fused like it's like a barbacoa taco that's the american in, way like, man nacho that's, cheese that's and just... you 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 would see it across the world but san antonio decides to make it like a a staple of its city like i'm talking barbacoa taco dipped in like cheese like nacho cheese crushed up like cheeto dust on top of it hot cheeto dust. Oh, god dude it's insane oh we're not rating you oh okay you're just here I don't know if we are rating anybody, but you guys definitely want to come back here next Monday for the next episode of the Beyond Nemesis podcast. So I could talk about the new Pokemon news coming out tomorrow. No, nope, canceled. I am so stoked. Developed man. by Aspire and it just got shelved. Dude, I love August, man. We get to see so much. Not to mention like Tech uh, Techtober's coming up pro also. So that means next this month, Apple's announcing all their new stuff for, or they're announcing their event for september and then hopefully the rtx cards in the fall too yeah yeah all right so we're rating somebody so. uh we got more nemesis content coming this week we got nemesis insider on thursday and D, D on sunday i don't know if we have a i already forgot what's it called the, the the saturday thing nemesis overload i believe so follow the channel if you're not already follow us on social media and come back next week to hear me and jade i rant about halo pokemon and hopefully some TV show based on a game comes out that we can just eviscerate start next week. It's, that's always fun. So here's our this sponsors. Is my, this is my therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> you better you gotta start paying me. <laughs> All right, that you know that's that's actually our new. Uh, our, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a New York. I'm gonna bash New York for you because I'm always going after San Antonio, and then we're really out of here. We just changed our state motto to "Pay up, mfers." So count it. What the All right. Hell? Okay. We have high taxes here. Yeah, you do. All right. See you guys next week. Later, y'all.